have you seen TCM play much on, on Drift? Um, not really, but the way they're playing now, they're playing for a pick, which, which shows that they don't know a lot about the map, or they're just trying to find out what Owen are doing. Probably that they don't know much about the map, I'll be honest. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Team still probably not had enough time to practice. So Shane gets an explosive kill. Uh, interesting. Talk about Grant. Oh, Shane with a two piece. All right, Shane, you go for the nice 1v3. I see you. Now 1v1, Shane versus Ricky. Uh, but we've seen TCM use a lot of danger cloaks, which was kind of a, I don't want to say secret ban, but players would mutually agree not to use. Is that something they used in Europe a lot, or is it just something they've picked up now they're over in North America? Um, no, we don't really use that in Europe, but now we do after Cod Champs, but uh, prior to Cod Champs, no, not really. We agreed, like Americans, to just not okay. use all of that stuff, but uh, at Cod Champs, I saw it used quite a lot. Uh, we used it, uh, other teams used it as well, so. Interesting. Shane, oh, I think he's actually just got away with that. Oh, Ricky, does he see him? No, Ricky jumps up top. Shane doesn't have enough time to plant the bomb, and he's failed his double jump. That's unfortunate. Shane was on for the ace that round, not going to be able to pick it up. And TCM versus Optic Nation in a search and destroy. You kind of have to favor Optic Nation, I feel. Is that is that fair, Mad Cat, or no? Yeah, it's fair to say. They have Killer, the best SD player in the world. <laughs> uh, no, but seriously, they are such a strong SD team. Even on Ghost, when they teamed, there was really, really strong at SD. And it's what really shuts. Uh, Got them the high placements they got, like fourth, uh, I believe it was UGC Niagara. They got fourth place and they won the open uh, open bracket at MLG Anaheim. So their strong point was definitely SMD and going up the, going up against the likes of TCM, you would favor them in a game of SMD. Well, now Miracles, one on four, picks up the first one, makes it a one versus three. That was the pick on Shane. Second player over back. What's that Christmas tree area? I believe that's Judd. He misses his shot. Miracle's in all sorts of trouble now. Gonna get pinched and does fall. So tied up at 1 1. Uh, just to give everyone an update, Elevate is 2 0 up against Optic Gaming. Whoa. That. That's a surprise, is what that is. I did not see that coming at all, but props to the boys over at Elevate coming out, making some plays. We'll see how that game finishes later on in the evening. Uh, but this one, tied at 1-1. TCM 1-0 up in the series. And really, Shane leading the team after the first two rounds with a 4-1 start. In terms of the best such and destroy player on TCM, who would you kind of point at? Who would you look at as the, the main guy? I think it would be Moose. He's more of the clutch factor. We've seen uh, multiple events. He likes his 1v3s and 1v4s. And I believe it was the ESWC and the last week of Ghost. He won't be freed, and then the second round after that, he got a 1v4, so the kid is nice, honestly. <laughs> he, can, he can hang, that's for sure. And yeah. We'll see if he can get any impressive clutches this game, but for now, three versus three. Looking at Jurd's perspective, he actually had a nice little spot, top middle, and he connected with a hit marker. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to pick up the kill, but Jurd with the bomb, bringing his way over towards A. There will be a player. Yeah, Moose is yeah. flanking around the back of Owen. I would like to see him make a play rather than just sitting at the back. But I guess he's waiting for his team to make the move at A and wait for the rotators like he is now when he picks up a kill on Killer. And he sees another one and he gets a two-piece on Miracle. So that was a big play by him to make his team go to A and then uh, once they cause a distraction, wait for the people at B to make a rotation A and get three kills on them in the back, which he did perfectly. Uh, Ricky, not really... A good position to pick up any kills. Get a die instantly, and TCM go 2 1 into the lead. And we saw the IMR there briefly, which we didn't really see for a while. And then as the new patch kind of came out, more players experimenting with it. From your perspective, Madcat, how good actually is that gun? Um, I've not really seen it much on LAN. Uh, personally, no one's really used it against me, but. When we was out in pre landing in America, the, mm -hmm. the S and D players used it a lot against us, and it really is a good gun to use on S and D because it can it can really get nice picks cross map with it being a burst gun. It does drop people in, uh, in a considerable amount of bullets. It can be a one bomb and even a free bomb, but 
If you've got a good connection, you can one bomb with that gun pretty nice. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. We saw TR use it at COD Champs quite a lot. Uh, but really, the only team to experiment with it on a LAN environment is Shirt's going to get picked out. So this is actually going to be a two versus two. This was a two versus four, but Ricky and Killer trying to make this clutch happen on board with Killer. Oh. And that's a nice pick with the sniper rifle. Just shuts down Gucci now, though. Moose, one on one, I believe. Moose falls and Optic Nation pick up the round. 2-2, two, two. tied up. Killer with the amazing sniper shot. I don't know what he was kind of doing. He was like, he ran at the player with the sniper, which was a ballsy play, but it worked <laughs> in his favor, which was a big play by him to get that pick. And then Ricky trading the kill just after, which was a great by them two to be in trading positions to get a kill and then trade after. So props to them two for sticking together and actually playing as a team in that situation. Again, that was a 2v4 clutch as well, coming in from the nation. And that's what makes them so good at search and destroy, in my honest opinion, that they can really do that. We saw that in the first game of the evening. Just 2v4 clutches, making just big plays, 1v3s, 1v1s, everything really falling in their favor. But now, obviously, Dynamic Map Helmet comes in. Um, TCM played this one extremely passive. Uh, they've just sat in the back of the base, waiting for that Dynamic Map Helmet. And me and Mr. X have talked about this before. We, we timed it ourselves. You can rush to that A site and beat the Avalanche. But from a player's perspective, is that a play worth doing or not at all? Um, I agree with you on the rush, you can definitely do it. I've tried it myself, uh, so it's definitely doable. But then again, you don't want to rush and have easy kills, people just uh, sniping down the avalanche. But it can be implemented as a strat, but from what I'm seeing, TCM don't seem to have any strategies on the map. They're just sitting back waiting for a pick and waiting for uh, Optination to make a mistake on the map. Uh, and I think the same for Optination as well. They don't seem to have many strategies on this map. What's the best way to really counter that then? So let's say, you know, TCM with a slow play style, just really waiting for mistakes to come in. If you're Optic Nation, how do you best counter that play style? Um, it would be to find that weakness on the map where they're not really focusing uh, or where the, where the loopholes in their strategy are. If, say, their A Street is not their best uh, lane and they're watching, then you just exploit that and really stack that side of the map so if, if Optic Nation find their weak spot they can uh, really damage the map so bad and really take this map in such a fashion. Well, bit of a cheeky ninja defuse coming out right there from Optic Nation. I believe that was Ricky who managed to get that so well and go 3-2 into the lead. Uh, Ricky gonna stick with the IMR. Cool, still got danger close up. Nope. Pulls out the sniper rifle and may actually we have to get this pick. No, misses. That's unfortunate. This is the second shot as well. And at that point, both players are going to go their separate ways. Avalanche comes in again for Optic Nation on their attacking side. And they played it very similar to TCM. Just sitting yeah. at the back of the base. No real intent to move. However, one player from TCM actually going to push through very aggressively. And that's actually going to be Jerd making some plays for TCM. Yeah. In this map, I've seen TCM lose a lot of rounds they shouldn't have. Um, I mean, the ninja defuse that just happened in that round mm -hmm. in the previous round where they got 2 v 4 uh, by, by Killer and Ricky. And they seem to be losing a lot of rounds they should be winning, which is a huge mistake by them. They should be locking down them rounds and picking them easy rounds up, which could cost them this map and easy the game uh, eventually. Jud not choosing to run an EXO ability at all. Is that something you've seen him opt out of a lot? I think uh, from previous titles, Jared loves people to hear him. I think he has like he delusional confidence uh, in his gun skill, and he he knows he can outgun you a lot of the times, and he believes in his gun skill a lot, which is really good as a player to know that you have really good gun skill. And I think it's a more of a mind game with the other team, just like you can sound for him, okay. but he uses that to his advantage. Wow, the confidence from Young Jerd. I like it. I like it a lot. This time, Ops to put Overclock on and he looks like he's going to tear towards that B bomb site. Jumps in. Jerd trying to get the pick, but no. Ricky with the IMR shreds through him. That leaves Shane in a position to try and pick up that kill. Not able to do so, though. Bomb still down over towards this B bomb site. Three versus three. Still kill it. Miracles and bows alive. Gunchy picks up one, though. So this forces a two versus three. Killer and Miracles, the s duo to try and clutch up. 
Yeah, I saw that TCM really focused the B-bomb site, sending three players, but then they had Moose Camp in their base watching for flankers, and now he wrapped around the A, saw the guy in mid, and then chased the kill. Um, that could have been really damaging for them to have three people rush the bomb site, and once Owen knew that there were players there, they surrounded the bomb. Right. But then Moose luckily got around them and got a good timing, but that could have damaged them to be in a 4v3 situation in the bomb site. See Shane picking up the round ending kill cam. And I believe it's actually Embos struggling a little bit here in this search and destroy. Uh, but 4 3 in favor of TCM. And we kind of jokingly said, is this going to be another situation where TCM go 2 0 up and then can't close it out? I mean, I hope not, but yeah. they're looking good in this drift search and destroy. Is of the nation over on the attacking side. It's going to be Embos with the bomb. And. Really not, not seeing any aggressive pushes up until this exact point. Bo's finally going to go for an aggressive push and try and plant that bomb. Yeah, I think both teams were trading rounds and one of them really wanted to get around above the other team. So rushing was an option just to really try and make a ballsy player to get around ahead of the opp opposition, mm -hmm. which both teams seem to still be trading rounds uh, when they're rushing. So I think, uh, I think you'll see TCM really get aggressive on this next uh, offense. The same with Owen. I oh think they'll get aggressive on their defense this time rather than letting TCM just take over a bomb site. Jud just crapped on that second player. I don't know who that was, but that was disgusting. With 12 seconds left. Jud really doesn't have time. He's printing pre fire. That's unfortunate. I'm going to win the 1v1, but another melee. Oh no. Doesn't matter. Not enough time. But Jud just obliterated the opposition. That's a full streak for him. You know, Mike, you were talking about how he's so confident in his gun skill. Jesus Christ, that was impressive. But yeah. game tied at 4-4, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see Bose pick it up. Like, he gets a lot of slack, but I think he's a really underrated player. He seems to be in pickup teams every event and then seems to come away with a top five finish every time. We saw Orlando yep. with the squad that he had with Methods. Um, I can't remember the team it, name, but they beat us. Mentioned that, they cause... really give us a slap in at well, in Giolando. <laughs> and probably one of the best teams we played that weekend. Uh, and then also we saw at Cod Champs, he played plays fourth or third with the Prophecy team. Yeah, he plays very, very well. It's funny that you say that because I've been mentioning, I mean, I said the same thing today, actually. But me and Matt mentioned it all the time. Whenever you're talking about Embos, this game, at least, he seems to be pretty comfortable at. Uh, obviously, it's not the best game to really take an example of that, but can he pick up the second kill? Embos. Oh my <gasps> god. He just turned on Jerd. That was Jerd? Oh no. Yeah. No, 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 Jerd. That's not good enough. But <laughs> doesn't matter. Traded anyway, so that's all that matters. Uh, but now, 5 to 4. TCM a round away from closing this one out. Yeah, Bo's had a good flank going on there. If his teammate stayed up and let him just flank and pick up the kills. He got two kills right there. If his team would have stayed up, that would have been uh, it would have been one player left alive for TCM. Mm -hmm. So his team really need to communicate and stay alive in that position. So how did TCM close this one out, Madcat? They're on defense. They have that in their favor, I guess. But what do you want to see them do a little bit differently? Because up until this point, it says you pointed out a few rounds ago, it's just been trading rounds back and forth. They, they need to really not let Optic Nation just pick a bomb site and plant it down and lock it down. They really need to start getting aggressive and not let Optic Nation rule the map. And we've seen it now, they've got control of A site and B site. They've got two players pushed up in the middle of the map. So Optic Nation are really playing it slow. I feel like this could work in their favor, but as they were in their favor, uh, they got a timing kill on Moose, uh, which Moose shouldn't be uh, really running about at that point. He, he should find a spot and just be happy with it. And there's another timing kill on Shane trying to flank, so Optic Nation really wait for TCM to make uh, mistakes. With TCM really needs to stop making mistakes, uh, it's really cost them a lot of maps in this early league. Well, 2v4 for TCM. Can they do it? Jordan Gunchi, two top players in this search and destroy for TCM alive. One coming in from around the outside. It's going to be Gunchi. Needs to pick up the first kill. Does so. 2v3, a little bit more manageable. Meanwhile, Jerd going to try and break into the A site. He's going to find the second gun. She does fall. 1v2 for Jerd. Not going to happen. Shot in the back. And this one going to a round 11. And I think a lot really rests on who's going to have what side. And on, of course, score. But TCM showing they can definitely hang despite Embos going 3 and 10, though. Owen somehow staying alive as you see Miracles there in the round 
ending kill cam. Two plants for both teams. Round 11, Mad Cat. Give me your prediction. Who wins this one? I'm to this. Oh, he's going against Europe, man. You're like the European Antichrist. What? <laughs> what? <gasps> Worse than me. Jesus. Wow. I know. I just, I just went straight there. Uh, Opti Nation on the attacking side. We'll see if they're going to head over towards that A site like they've kind of favored for the most part. But Ricky just dashing left and right, trying to get some vision on any of these TCM players. And you know, TCM, the last couple of rounds they've been on defense, have made small mistakes like you pointed out, getting a little too aggressive here and there. If they just kind of pick a spot and just play it, they should be able to trade efficiently enough to potentially pick up this round. Yeah, they've stacked three people in B and one at A, which is not what they should be doing, but it's better than what they've actually been doing. So, then Killer got a pick on Gunchi. Uh, I don't know how he got that pick, but he cross mapped him and pressed side shots by Killer. Ricky's still with the bomb. The 4v3 in Owen's favor. Kill comes in from Bose. That's on Shane over at A site. And you see Owen just stacking the A site. However, Ricky. Staying over towards B, this is a four versus two in favor of Owen. No way, realistically, they should be losing this. As players from TCM try to get a pick. Jer tries a quick scope. That's not going to work. Moose, one on four. It's not going to end well. Has a thermal melee, but that's about all he has going for him as he jumps up top. Going to get challenged and falls. Optic Nation pick up the search and destroy as this series is going to be tied at 1-1. I believe Optic Gaming also picked up the game three. So that's a 2 1 game in favor of Elevate over there. But now, guys, quick commercial break. When we return, heading over to game three between TCM and Optic Nation. Oh,